With the update of Revoice Pro version 4.1, we see a great deal of workflow improvements. One of the biggest ones is specifically to do with the way in which Revoice Pro deals with output tracks. So I've got a Pro Tools session that's open here. Let's start selecting these clips and sending them over to the relevant tracks in Revoice Pro. In previous versions of Revoice Pro, if you wanted to, for example, create an APT or a doubler, you always had to take into account creating an output track to accommodate that process. This is something that we no longer have to think about in 4.1. So let's select our lead vocal track here. I'm gonna click the B key to bring up my new process dialog, and let's choose, for example, a doubler. I'll choose a relevant preset. I always like to use stereo vocal mild. And now notice in the output section here, as opposed to having to choose a track, we have a default setting of automatic. Let's click the new process and you can see that Revoice Pro automatically creates the output track and it's borrowed the name from lead vocal. In addition, it's also appended out. So this is incredibly useful. Now it's worth mentioning that this not only applies to doublers, but for example, if I wanted to do the same thing and create an APT, for example, we have the same workflow. So let's choose a preset. I'm gonna go with tight timing only. We'll choose the lead vocal as our guide and dub will be harm one. And in this case, I wanna create two processes at the same time. And note that we've set our output to automatic. Now you can see that Revoice Pro has created the output tracks automatically. It has named them accordingly. And in addition to that, we can also see the out in brackets on both of these tracks. Another area that we see a great improvement with Revoice Pro 4.1 is in the ability to create process groups. So let's say that we have one or more vocal tracks and we wanna adjust the timing of all of those tracks against one track. So for example, I would select my lead vocal. Let's click the B to bring up the new process window. I'm going to choose APT and in my presets, let's choose something relevant. In this case, I'm going to go with tight timing only. Now notice under here, we have the ability to select a new process group. Now when we select a new process group, essentially what this allows us to do is have one APT that's linked to multiple tracks. So for example, I could choose my guide and my dub. We'll leave the output set to automatic. We wanna create multiple processes. So we'll select two and we'll click new process. Now notice as soon as we've done this, a couple things have happened. First of all, we have this new option on the right. And what this allows us to do is without any shortcuts, I can play the processed output tracks against the original track that was used for timing. Let's pan these out and have a listen to the results. 16 years later in this young lady, speaking to a crowd who needed to see now the great thing about this is we don't have to use any shortcuts in terms of soloing out individual tracks and at any given point in time I can just use this shortcut to engage the transport and allow me to listen to these tracks in context with each other. Now the other benefit is that if we want to make any adjustments to the APT we can simply do so for all of the tracks by just opening up one window. So for example, we are now looking at the attributes for group one, and I can simply adjust any of these parameters, and I could even include pitch into this if I wanted to. And this is going to propagate against all of the tracks that were associated with this process group. Another area that we see improvements in is the way in which Revoice Pro deals with warp regions. So for example, let's solo out our lead vocal track. We'll just maximize this to its full resolution. And the simple shortcut of using the W key will automatically convert this to a warp region. Furthermore, using the Option or Alt W will automatically select all of the pitch blocks. They will be conformed to being tuned to 100%. And this is of course, depending on where these notes are residing. In addition to that, we also have some clear visual feedback in terms of the center pitch of all of these individual pitch blocks. However, one thing I would add is that tuning is always something that's done best in context. So when using this type of function, you definitely want to make sure you're listening and verifying the pitch correction against the rest of the performance. And then of course, as we would expect, choosing the pitch tool, we still have the ability to select multiple pitch blocks and offset their tuning as needed. By far, one of the most exciting features of the 4.1 update is the improvements that we have with DAWs which support the Audio Random Access or ARA2 protocol. 
I've got a Studio One song open. Let's lasso select all of the events. We will choose audio and edit with Revoice Pro. So you notice a couple things. First of all, you notice that we no longer have to manually map out each track one by one. There might be a couple other things that you'll notice as well. So for example, in addition to the track name that's being taken from the Studio One song, we also have visual information as to any color coding that was done within Studio One. So for example, if I was to change this into a different color altogether, you'll see that this updates in Revoice Pro. So if you're the type of person that likes to color code your audio events visually, this is going to be a huge time saver. Now in addition, if you've done any work within Revoice Pro and you render the actual audio events, your Revoice Pro session will now be fully recalled if you choose the restore option.